Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today, come book buying with me. So it's November now and the book buying ban is over, obviously. Um, we're gonna be, I'm on my way to Second and Charles now. There are two volumes of manga that I'm looking for. I'm going to go to Barnes and Noble and I'm also going to go to Books A Million a little bit later. I kind of know what I want. Uh, I'm looking for manga and a few more um, to complete my collection. As far as other books like fiction and nonfiction, young adult, like I don't really have a preference. I'm not looking for anything in particular, um, but it's manga shopping again. So come with me as I discover and spend a lot of money. Hello again. So it is Thursday. It is my day off. Oh, can you hear that? Can y'all hear the damn floor squeaking? Oh, let's not walk. Um, so the <laughs> last time I reported it was yesterday. I said I was gonna go to three bookstores. I didn't end up doing that because technically I was working. Um, so the store I didn't get to go to was Books A Million. I have to run some errands. So I'm going to the post office. I'm going to drop off those books that I did not read to the library. Let's not talk about it. And then I'm trying to hide. Like that's the stuff I bought so far. And once again, I'm going to this last place so I can try to find these like three or four books that I want. Um, I'm going to try to film in Books A Million, but then I'm going to come back. I'm going to show you, like do a little book haul. And then I also want to show you what I got from NecoCon. So I don't know if I filled y'all in since I've been like doing little snippets this whole week. Um, I did a terrible job filming in NecoCon. I forgot to film on our way there to pick up my friend. <laughs> I forgot to film as we walked in both times we went to the convention. I filmed like one decent like little thing um 
And then when I remembered again on the last day to film, I was filming, but looking up. So I wasn't looking at the camera and I had it, unfortunately, at butt level to the person who was in front of me. <laughs> so I filmed someone's butt for a minute. Obviously that doesn't need to be in here, uh, but it was a nice looking butt. So good for them. So I'm just going to show you guys what I ended up buying. Um, my, my husband's already taken like a lot of the prints that he bought upstairs. So I'm just going to show you what's going to go in my office. Uh, but yeah, so let's see. I'll film a books a million, put some cute lo-fi beats on it, and uh, here we go. All right, hello, welcome back. Uh, so this is take two. I tried to film this a minute ago and the whole thing was out of focus, so that really sucks, but that's okay because we're back at it again. Uh, so I was unsuccessful at Books A Million, unfortunately. The thing that I've been looking for, the volumes that I've been looking for are um, Soul Eater volumes four and five, and then literally anything after that uh, that is not the hardcover book. So. In the second and Charles like footage that I showed, uh, I showed you guys the fourth uh, volume of Soul Eater, but in hardcover, it's so pretty. Very, very, very nice. Uh, and usually I don't really care about having like hardcover and paperback of the same thing, but it's far more expensive to get the, the hardcover book. And I just prefer manga and paperback. That's just my preference. So that is going to have to be probably something that I look for online now, unfortunately. Not necessarily that I will buy from Amazon, but just I will have to get that from. I I'm not finding it anywhere. Um, I'll look again. I'll keep trying to go on the website. Unfortunately, I have really bad luck with the Barnes & Noble website because um, oftentimes it doesn't work for me. But at the end of the day, I'm probably going to have to order those volumes online. And then the other volumes I was looking for are volumes three and five for Blue Exorcist. So these two, uh, Soul Leader and, and Blue Exorcist, I was like, you know what, I'll just get what I can find. Um, I haven't even like started going through Blue Exorcist yet, but I did start Soul Leader and now it's like, <laughs> I want you, but it's okay. So unsuccessful today and unsuccessful finding those, but that's all right. So the first day I got five bucks. I got, ooh, oh, actually, sorry, I'm skipping ahead. Let me show you what I got first first. So last week, Devin took me to Barnes & Noble, a different one, and I obviously did not film this. Um, and he got me five books. So that was really nice of him. So sweet. So he got me volumes one through four of Fire Force. Uh, I did watch the whole first season of this, and I really liked it. I think I got to, like, episode 10 of the second season, and I just kind of, like, lost interest. Not because it's not interesting, but I just lost interest in watching any and all mon any and all anime. Um, at the time, they didn't have volume 5, which is okay. We're getting to that. Um, but yeah, he got me the first four volumes. Very excited, because it is a series that I want to collect. And then, If the Shoe Fits by Julie Murphy. So... You know, I got this, so the day I watched Kayla, Kayla's wrap up, um, I bought this book. <laughs> Devin bought it for me. And then 
I feel like everybody I missed everybody's TBR from the month before because now I've watched a lot of people's October wrap ups and then several people have read this and I don't I felt like the first time I saw anything about it was from Kayla so I'm jumping on the bandwagon I will be reading if the shoe fits uh it's a romance we've got I, I mean I'm not gonna go into it I don't think uh I think this is one of those like it's it's a book where a uh, plus size woman dating show but it's like an accident I'm not gonna go into the whole thing you'll hear about it on the wrap-up because I will be reading this this month so those are the first five books I got that kind of started this whole thing I got volume nine of Fire Force at Second and Charles I have a bunch of other volumes on my wish list for Christmas but it starts at volume 10 so I stopped at nine uh, to get this because I'm not going to uh, take away the opportunity for my secret Santa to get me the rest of the <laughs> of the manga so I got the ninth volume from Second and Charles I also got three other books from Second and Charles which were super cool so I showed you in the video some older version covers of Laurel K. Hamilton. So I was super surprised because I didn't even think that, I didn't even think twice about the original covers that I started off reading the Anita Blake series were like not the first covers. I was so wrong. Uh, so I went there a month or so ago, month, two, maybe two months ago, and then bought um, a whole new set of the paperbacks to like replace the ones that were my original ones that have the same covers and I didn't even see apparently the first edition covers and that's what I discovered that was that footage and they are so like 80s 90s fantasy very very cool uh I was telling my mom about it and I was like I'm gonna stop myself I can't now begin to collect those gotta gotta stop at some point uh, Anita Blake is really like my favorite of the series that Laurel K. Hamilton has done. Uh, she also did another series called Mary Gentry and that came, that's like fairly newer uh, if I remember correctly. I think that came after I like made it through like the series. Like I had to be like maybe in my early 20s when the Mary Gentry series came out. Anita Blake is everything like preternatural, supernatural. You have werewolves, vampires, blah, blah, blah. Mary Gentry is mostly fae unseelie court type situation. I only made it to like, you know, I'm sad to say, but I don't even think I made it through the whole first chapter of the Mary Gentry book. I just was not interested and it's most likely because I compared it to Anita Blake. Don't do that. Don't make my mistakes. I do that constantly. So anyway, so that's a second series by Laurel K. Hamilton that I was aware of but didn't pick up. I know that she's done like anthologies which I'm not always the biggest fan of but this little number this I saw and I was like um <laughs> I want it. Look at this. Look at this book. I love the cover. It is like I don't know what it is but it's everything to me. So this is Night Seer. Uh, this definitely came out after she was writing Anita Blake uh, because it says Spellbinding First Novel from the author of Anita Blake Vampire Series. This looks like 90s bro like seriously and to be honest like I don't remember I, I've never looked up when the first Anita Blake novel came out so it very well could be 90s type situation but Sorcerer, Prophet, Enchanter. Um, do, do, do. In this her debut novel her rich imagination spreads its wings to fly in a tale of a woman known as a sorcerer, prophet, and enchantress. The number, uh, the number, the mark of a demon can open the door to undream, to undreamed of powers and possibilities or expose a soul to the darkest and most forbidden forces of sorcery. Now, Kelios wears the mark and the time of avenging her mother's death is at hand. I'm excited. I'm excited. Here's the thing. Look, now, I said it before. Obviously, I'm about to say it again. Uh, Laurel K. Hamilton there's some problematic stuff that often happens in her books. Uh, she definitely has, at least for Anita Blake, very pick me vibes for your main character. Let's see what happens with Kelios. Kelios. It's K-E-L-E-O-I-S. 
I'll pick it up as I go along. Uh, but yes, she looks like a bad bitch. She does. And I'm excited to read this one. And then I got two other books. So I didn't put this in the video, but here's the thing. I like a cozy mystery. Uh, I don't read as many as I would like, but I have a lot of respect and love for them. I've been very blessed to have read some cool, funny, uh, cozy mysteries. I read Christmas Cocoa Murder last year. It was like a little book of three smaller books inside, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the thing I love the most about Cozy Mysteries is their titles and their covers often. They are so funny. The way the Cozy Mystery like groups do their names for their books are just like so funny to me because I'm really bad at puns. So anyway, I was looking in I think the fantasy section and right behind me was mystery and I saw this mother trucker and I was like I'm I've got to get it uh death by dumpling by Vivian Chen um it's a noodle shop mystery first in a new series uh if I remember correctly this came out in 2013 I noticed that somebody I follow Rincey Reads read this I'm not sure when but they read this book because Rincey Reed actually does read a lot of like cozy mystery books uh but anyway they rated this like three or four stars I was like okay yes this is everything to me uh, come on come on now and then the second book was there and it was dim sum of all fears that's hilarious to me um cozy mystery people Cozy Mystery Authors, y'all are awesome. I just, I don't know what it is about. Like the cover is cool. The freaking name is cool. So have any of you read anything by Vivian Chen? Please let me know in the comments what you thought, what you rated. Um, I think I would actually like to try to read these uh, this month if I can, at least the first book. But I'm excited. They, they definitely look really cool. They sound cool. And somebody I follow has already read it and they rated it fairly high. So I'm excited. So yes. Those four I got from Second and Charles. Then I got four books from Barnes and Noble. Sorry, I did not film like me walking into Barnes and Noble. That's a really big Barnes and Noble in my like area. That's the only one that has an elevator. El escalator, I keep saying elevator. It's the only one that has an escalator. And I haven't been there in like two years. I could not tell you why. It, well, probably because it's like kind of difficult to get into. And there's some that are just like much easier to access. I go to several different um, Barnes and Nobles when I'm at work because they're usually by a store that I'm going to. So I got volumes uh, five, six, seven, and eight. So now I have volumes one through nine. Somebody else can find me the rest. That's awesome. I'm excited. Uh, but yeah, and the cool thing about Barnes and Noble was that um, as I was going up the elevator, there was somebody in front of me like the second time I went up because of course, of course, I absolutely did not, even though I thought I was, record. I meant to record the manga section in this Barnes and Noble because it's huge. It's like the cool one that I see online where it's got like the books that are like this and it's got one facing out and like you can just shove as much manga in there as possible. But my dumb ass took a picture and thought as I was walking around my fucking phone that I was taking a video. I just realized that when I was putting everything together. So yeah, that's my life. But anyway, so this the first time I went upstairs, uh, I was behind a woman. We at first went opposite directions and then we ended up in the same aisle, which was romance. She started talking to me. She introduced herself. She said her name was Megan. And we just had a grand old little conversation about like our our book, you know, preferences. She told me she's a librarian. She kind of comes here just to get ideas of what's new to what's at order for her library. I learned a lot of bunch of other stuff about library things. That was really cool. Genuinely liked that. So it was very interesting. I had so much fun. It was nice. I usually do not talk to people in public. Um, I will have headphones in or I will just not make eye contact because unfortunately I have resting nice face, um, resting customer service face, especially with the mask. I always make eye contact with people. So I feel like that just makes people feel like they want to talk to me. <laughs> I hate that about myself. So anyway, 
Uh, but yeah, that was a nice little conversation. That doesn't mean I'm going to start talking to people. Doesn't mean that. But it was just really nice. So anyway, uh, so those are the things I got. Like I said, I didn't find anything at Books a Million today, unfortunately. But it's okay. Like, I got a, I got a nice, decent amount of books. And honestly, anything else that I want, I can ask for for Christmas. But anyway, so here are some nonfiction books that I have. Now, I can't remember if I mentioned this in the video I did, I think it was in October, about nonfiction books or like maybe I did a book haul. No, I don't know. Maybe it was September. Anyway, Savage Appetites by Rachel Monroe, True Stories of Women, Crime and Obsession. The reason why I got this was because of TikTok. And I'm gonna tell you something, book talk, y'all are awesome. I really need to learn how to make TikToks and reels because you get, it's so creative. Like it's so cool. Like, and I, I always find something, like I always get good recommendations, but anyway. Uh, this got recommended because of everything that was happening with the Gabby Petito case. Uh, if you weren't aware, there were a lot of conversations being had about the true crime community and the way that it can be inappropriate or just like, just not a cute look. Um, so I cannot remember the person who recommended this. They recommended some other books too that were kind of on the subject. But yeah, the conversations that were happening during Gabby Petito was like, you know, people who were making conspiracy theories, you know, it was, it was a mess in some ways. And then it was enlightening in others. And unfortunately, I think a lot of people showed their ass during that time. And the greater conversation was, um, oh, what, what, what's the, what's it called? Basically, like, when a white woman goes missing, national news how many other people went missing during that time that were found after the fact, but they did not get the same type of national news coverage and the same type of like intrigued situation by these people who really like true crime. I'm somebody who likes true crime documentaries. I listen to true crime podcasts, not really the ones that most people do not like. I can't remember what it's called, but the one that everybody makes a joke of, I don't listen to that one, but at the end of the day, like those conversations were very valid. How many people who were talking about Gabby Batito and were on my For You page on TikTok constantly are talking about any other miss missing person now? They're not. Um, there's like a few TikToks that are dedicated to stuff like that. And that's great that they stay consistent. But at the end of the day, a lot of people talked about Gabby Batito because she was a white woman. That's just the truth. And it's sad. Uh, so basically this was brought up. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Uh, it's a combination of personal narrative reportage and sociological in in investigation of violence in media in the 20th and 21st century. Savage appetites is a journey into obsession and a fresh, fascinating twist on the true crime genre. So yes, I figured I would give this a try. If I already mentioned it, I'm sorry and you've seen it. Uh, if not, maybe you will read it with me. Who knows? Next up, on a completely different Barnes & Noble uh, shopping trip, because like I said, I go to these multiple times during the week, and sometimes I just walk around and don't buy anything. I got Against White Feminism by Rafia Zakaria. Uh, is a cover by, okay? This cover looks fucking amazing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, a radically inclusive, intersectional, and transnational approach to the fight for women's rights. I'm excited to read this one, of course. Uh, I was really excited because I posted that on Instagram and the author liked my post. I was like, oh, that's so exciting. I don't ever tag authors, uh, but I do like a hashtag. And it is really cool when they like your stuff, just to be, to be honest. And then the next book I got was The Trouble with White Women, A Counter History of Feminism by Kyla Schuler. Uh, also a cover by, but also a foreword by, because Brittany Cooper did a foreword for this. And if you haven't read Eloquent Rage, you really should. I absolutely recommend it. Uh, so an incisive, inspiring history of self-serving white feminists and the women who have continually defied them, building a feminism for all. Give it a pick up, please. I'm very excited. Uh, the I, I'm not sure if I'm going to get to both of these books in November. It is a nonfiction November. Just give you a little pluggy plug. This is the first month or the first year that I was aware of nonfiction November. I heard it from Raina 
and um basically i i think it's like a seven year thing like on booktube like they've been doing this for seven years which is awesome the only requirement to participate is you can just read one nonfiction book, but the whole thing is to like encourage people to read more nonfiction. There are four prompts that you can do, uh, and it's just four words um, to kind of help you choose things, but I'm not creative enough to think of anything. So, mm -mm -mm -mm. so a book, a book Olive, I believe is, was the creator. I'll put all that information in the description box so you can follow along. But yeah, I've been reading a few things that are nonfiction. Um, just as an update, I don't think that, um, a novel serendipity has updated the Naruto TBR challenge. They're in Japan right now, so I get it. Uh, they're starting a new life. But yeah, so I haven't done like a what I'm going to read video yet, but that's okay. So anyway, those are the books that I have. So now we're going to move on to the stuff I got from NekoCon. Now I'm going to try to switch this up. The little camera situation so you can better see what the fuck is going on and maybe you don't have to look at my face the whole time so bear with me we're gonna be moving around we're gonna go on a little adventure Alrighty. so first up i bought some pins i bought a kilowa a gone and a shippo pin they're just so cute now i have a lot of pins saved uh, in a bag <laughs> another part of my room I stopped making a lot of Ida bags a while ago so that's on me I want to start getting into making more Ida bags so I didn't go crazy on the pins but I did go crazy on the charms unfortunately but that's on me as you can see they are so cute the shippo was the big like ah uh, he's so adorable and we'll keep in on the Hunter Hunter theme because, you know, I was also wearing a Hunter Hunter shirt. I got another Kilowa and Gone piece and this, these are charms. They are so cute. Now they are, there is something on the back, but it's the same thing. So that's very cute. I got these Promare Sanrio style charms that are just so freaking adorable. Oh my God, they're so cute. Now they don't have anything printed on the other side, but that's okay. I absolutely... We'll probably hang these on the little charm grid thing I have underneath my bookshelves uh, in the office. But these are just like literally too cute to pass up. I got a full metal alchemist charm that is reversible. So you have both of the Armstrong siblings on it. So freaking adorable. I cannot stand it. I have another charm by the same artist that is Alphonse and Cats. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. Had to get my dumb bitch juice charm i just it's so pretty like this stood out and i just could not pass it up now 100 percent thought i don't know that i'm a thought but this is a home that supports thoughtness so it is okay but i'm obsessed she's so pretty next up i got two baddies from one piece now yes i have not watched one piece yet we don't need to talk about it i will okay so i felt like i could treat myself to some pretty ass women from one piece so these are the Nami and Robin charms. So fucking pretty. And because I am such a nice person, I got my husband this chopper. So Devin is somebody who watches One Piece and this is a, one of his favorite characters. And he is such a cutie. And to me, these are the Peace de Resistance, okay? I got Inuyasha charms. So Inuyasha in Kagome with Shippo. Sango, Kilala, and Moroku. And then of course, one of the best ones. Rin, Shishomaru, and Jokin. Jokin is my favorite character, if you didn't know. I have a friendship tattoo with two of my other friends where we just have Jokin and like ridiculous facial expressions. Um, yeah, so these were the charms I got. I got some other charms for my friends for Christmas, but I don't wanna show y'all that because you know, they watch the video. Y'all, Toria, you're an amazing friend. Thank you. Uh, so let's transition to the prints. Okay, and last, the prints. So I'm gonna try to run through this pretty quickly because I know this is gonna be crinkling and crinkling. Oh, I got this a present. Uh, so first up is a print um, of Naruto. You guys might have actually seen this artist before. And it sorry, I don't have any of the artist names. Um, so this artist. Uh, if you've like been on Facebook or Instagram, you've probably seen like a lo-fi beat to images like this that are sometimes animated. 
I got one that was Naruto. Devin got one that is One Piece. And then I got a different one for my friend, Toria. Yes, Christmas presents for you. Uh, next up, my friend Neptune got me this really awesome Zero Two print. She's gorgeous. She's sexy. She's awesome. Uh, so obviously we already know, you know, I love Studio Trigger. If you haven't already seen BNA, please do it. I got a BNA print that I'm so excited for. I already know where I'm going to hang it. Um, seriously, this is on Netflix. I love it. It's not as like super fan service-y like you're probably used to from Studio Trigger. It's not like the most wholesome, but it's, you know, less fan service-y than, uh, my girl, Yoko. Uh, Devin was really nice. He got me this from this really cool artist. So I'm obsessed. I feel like I don't always get enough like Yoko, Gurren Lagann, like prints and stuff. Uh, but yes, also, you know, BNA is not as fan servicey as Kill a Kill, the queen king and everything of fan service. Uh, so he got me Kill a Kill, Satsuki, and then You go. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I have some other like prints from Kill a Kill. I really like the way those look though. It's super freaking cute. Then I got another Zero Two. My friend Neptune got me this one. It's like holographic. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but she's pretty. She's a dog. And then, yeah. And then lastly, Devin got me a Cowboy Bebop. So exciting. Um, so yeah, so he, like I said earlier, did I say that earlier? Who knows? I'm not sure if I said earlier, but, um, Devin took his upstairs, so he got far more prints than I did, which is okay. Uh, but yeah, pretty much, like, our whole house is covered in prints when it comes to artwork. So, like, what you see of my office is what our bedroom looks like. It's what our, um, well, what everything looks up upstairs in his gaming room and I want to eventually do a video where like I show you guys Devin's gaming room and then my gaming setup maybe even like show some parts where we game together very cute very cute little setup of the couple um but yeah that is my video hopefully this part is not blurred because I'm I'm losing steam all right I got my bottle of water here and I just ate some sugar and I'm feeling like <laughs> I'm looking tired but anyway thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. This is vlog number two. Very exciting. I think it's going well. Uh, enjoy all of the low, I hope you enjoyed all of the lo-fi that I, that I had to use because that's like my favorite genre of music, I guess. And I love the same artists that I constantly use that I always credit in the description box. Uh, it's gonna be a thing. But yes, if you like the video, please like the video. If you like, like it, subscribe, hit the notification bell, please. Follow me on all the other little things that I'm on. Twitter, uh, Instagram. Why not? I make posts, you know? I try to be consistent. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much. Have a good day and goodbye.